Viewing Steven Crowder is kind of like viewing a freak show at a circus. You know, you're you're deriving entertainment from the insanity that stands before you, yet at the same time, you partially feel bad for this hideous mass. However, Steven Crowder is free, and you have to pay to get into a freak show, which unfortunately means more people are watching Steven Crowder, when let's be honest, I'd way rather see a dude with two fucking heads than listen to a goddamn Steven Crowder video. But here we are. After accusing black people of being racist against white people, Steven, Crowder's, Steven Crowder declares slavery was never racially motivated. Now that's a hot take. <laughs> I think that this idea that your race is supreme is incredibly rare, but I, I think that actual racism, meaning that you have, uh, not necessarily that you view them as inferior, but a predetermined negative worldview of someone because of their race, uh, can happen in any group yeah. of people. Yeah. And I do think, actually, it, 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 we're probably at a point where it happens more. You probably have more black people right now because... Doesn't Steven Crowder literally make racist jokes derived from stereotypes about black people? Doesn't he just, like, assume black people's worldviews and, and mannerisms in certain instances in order to stereotype them and mock them and make fun of them? Remember the black farmers one? where he talked about the, the blacks growing crack or something. <laughs> Remember, people like Steven Crowder would have the definition of racism set so that it, we make sure it falls in line with being mean to white people, but also if someone is a white supremacist, that bar is so high that it's virtually impossible for someone besides David Duke to ever meet that bar. Well, right now because of what they're being fed by the media. Uh, who have a preconceived, incorrect, negative idea of what white people are yeah. than white people maybe have of black people. I don't know. See, exactly. He makes up this definition of racism, kind of, so that he can apply it where he needs it to. However, if he took this same definition, this negative, having a predisposed negative viewpoint of someone, I feel like Steven Crowder has literally done that with his mocking black people, doing the stereotypical black guy voice, making fun of black farmers growing crack. Isn't that assuming a lot about people based on nothing but their race, Crowder? I mean, that's literally like your stand-up bit. Oh, maybe it's a 50-50 split, but it certainly yeah. is something all groups can be racist. And the left yeah, just argues like, yeah, but only one can have, only one can be systemically oppressive. Do you guys know? Maybe you guys can bring this up, the numbers. This is literally, it's so funny. Like, he doesn't even try to even get it remotely close. That's what the left says. No, only one race can be systemic, you see. Ah, yes. We all know. Systemic white people. Do you even know what words mean, Crowder? Did you, do you have any of this scripted? Right, people who lived on the Mediterranean coast, they were at yeah. risk. You know, you guys know about the history of North yeah, Africa, yeah. the, you know, the, the yeah. Moors. People, and, and by the way, these were, they were kidnapping white people. Yeah. Just to be clear, this is not something, slavery is not something that has been racially based. No. Ever. Now, it was codified into law because most slaves at a certain point in the United States were black, but you can look at other countries <laughs> where they decided, <laughs> oh, okay, now we're going to try and ensure that we maintain control over these slaves. Does anybody say that every time slavery occurs, it is a result of racism? There are other times where people are slaves because, like, they're indentured servants, right? And they're forced into, like, servitude. That's not racially based. He he's, like, creating a pretend argument in order to argue against it, almost. No, not all slavery was racially based. Fine. But slavery, as far as in America... Yeah, dude, it was pretty fucking racially based. I think we're going to have to have a history lesson in a second, but first, let's uh stab our ears a little bit longer with Steven Crowder's grating voice. And so, therefore, you look at what are the majority of slaves? All right, we determine them then by skin color or ethnicity or where they've come from, like the in, you know Indian people were enslaved. There are still people enslaved in the world today. Look, slavery is not uniquely American. It was never uniquely American. No one says it is. Is this how conservatives argue every fucking time? Do they just make shit up, pretend it's the left's argument, and then argue against that? 
I mean, I'll be honest, it's a brilliant strategy. I wish that I could just make up imaginary arguments so that I could then debunk them and just claim that those imaginary arguments were the the big, scary, mean right-wingers. You know, guys, did you hear about conservatives? Lately, they've been arguing for uh, for pro-pedophilia. I don't have any examples. It's just, you know, conservatives commonly say that, like, we can run around and kidnap children all day. That's fine with me. But I say, conservatives, you're being immoral. And I say that pedophilia is wrong. Wow, this is pretty easy. And I can't believe conservatives are pro-pedophilia. That's fucked. It still exists outside of the United States of America. Slavery was never racially motivated, to be clear. It happened in large numbers, to the tune of millions, black people enslaving white people as well. And it's wrong across the board. The United States is singularly unique in, however... What the fuck are you talking about, Hunter? You're literally fabricating so bad. Wow, dude. Uh, if, if you're me and this is the joke, it just went way over your motherfucking head, okay? So there you guys have it. Steven Crowder, he's like arguing against an argument that nobody makes. Again, remind me when the left argued that every time slavery occurred, it's because of racism. I don't think that's what literally anyone says. But okay, apparently we're going to need a fucking history lesson um, because Steven Crowder doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. So reasons for the development of the slave trade. Entrenched racism among Europeans meant that slavery took on a racial tone. Ideas of racial differences made it easier to justify slavery. The enslavement of Africans was justified by the belief that Africans were inferior to Europeans. African slaves were seen as benefiting from being looked after by the superior Europeans. So again, let's be hyper specific here. The European North American slave trade was largely racially motivated. Does this mean that every time slavery occurs, it's racially motivated? No. Thankfully, I've never heard anybody make that argument except for Steven Crowder who is making it up, sticking it on his opponent, and then debunking it to virtue signal for his audience to get a quick check from his oil billionaires. A lot of the motivations specifically for the European slave trade was also due to uh, racism entwined with religion. You'll notice often that religion throughout history has been used to justify all kinds of fucking atrocities. It's an extremely common thing. So the Church of England generally accepted the idea of slavery. It had links to the slave trade through the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel and Plantations. Its slaves were branded on their chest with the word society. Holy shit. And also keep in mind at the time, the Church of England was very much intertwined with the state. So they followed the political doctrine of those in power. They used one of these Bible verses specifically to justify it, and that was Genesis 9. Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves, will he be to his brothers? He also said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend the territory of Japheth. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. Christians believed that Canaan's descendants settled in Africa. They saw a direct link between Canaan being cursed into slavery with the enslavement of Africans. Oof. Christians were definitely on the wrong side of history that time. At, at, at least that's a first, right? <laughs> Other biblical passages were seen to oppose slavery, like Exodus 21, which says, whoever steals a man and sells him and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. But this passage was banned in British colonies due to its perceived hostility to slavery. So Crowder, I don't know what you're on. I know that it's really easy for you when you're a brainlit piece of shit to just make up some bullshit about how slavery was never actually racially motivated. In, however, recognizing and ending slavery because it was incompatible with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. That is unique. People will say, well, they didn't really have slavery in, uh, in, in, in Britain. Well, that's actually not really true. And certainly if you look at yeah. the English Empire. Wait, I hate this one too. You see, America had the, the Bill of Rights 
and the Constitution, and that's why we were unique in ending slavery. Wasn't America like the last, one of the last ones to end slavery? Which country, yeah, abolish slavery first is what I'm looking for. Haiti, where's us? Okay, 1862. So we're like one of the last on the fucking list. Brazil abolishes slave trading in 1851. Oh, I love it. The virtue signal. You see, we were unique in the Bill of Rights. Sorry, it took you longer than, like, everyone else to get there, pal. Is this, like, what? are you going to make the iPhone argument? We might not be the first to do it, but when we do it, it's better. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.